Hi, welcome back to Planning for a Career in Healthcare. This is Jim McKinnell, Director of the Office of Pre-Health Professional Student Development at the University of New Mexico. Today I want to take a couple of steps back. We've talked about applications for professional schools. We've talked about uh, the component parts of that. We've talked about undergraduate GPA. But we sort of skipped over that, that first big hurdle or that first big challenge that many of us that are considering a career in healthcare uh, face, which is what career do we want? Uh, a lot of times when we're thinking about careers in healthcare, we're kind of limited. We think about doctors and nurses. Occasionally, we think about pharmacists. Uh, but then we sort of stop thinking about other career options. Um, even if we just look at doctors and nurses, even if we come uh, with the plan of going into either nursing or, or medicine, um, knowing, what, knowing what courses to choose uh, can be challenging. Um, even more challenging then is if you actually arrive at, at, um, at school and you're not sure what profession you want to go into. Uh, unfortunately, I think that today we still see a lot of gender bias when, when new students are talking to advisors. And so if a young woman, for, uh, uh, for example, walks up to an academic advisor and says that she's interested in a career in healthcare, I still think there are a lot of people that automatically go to nursing, uh, that they think, okay, this is a woman and a woman in healthcare is a nurse. Uh, I, that also is a mentality uh, that is rapidly going away, and hopefully um, in the near future that won't be uh, the kind of of predetermined assessment that young women interested in healthcare are going to be um, uh, subjected to. The problem that I have with that is that if a young woman does meet one of those one uh, an advisor like that and is directed towards nursing, the prerequisite courses for nursing are different than the prerequisite courses for medicine. Now this is a problem because if after a year of study, say, a young woman finds herself doing very, very well academically and decides, no, I, I really do want to go into medicine. I, I have the ability and it's what I want to do. I, 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 don't know, I don't know why I chose nursing. I, I really want to go into medicine. Well, she has a year of academic work under her belt. And unfortunately, a couple of those courses that she may have been directed to take because they're prerequisite courses for nursing are not prerequisite courses for medicine. Now she's in a position where she has to retake courses. She's going to lose money. It's additional effort. It's additional time. It may delay graduation. Um, and t that all translates into frustration for students. Um, that's something I'm very, very concerned about because we have a fairly high attrition rate between our first year and second year here at University of New Mexico. And I, I, that bothers me. I, I don't want students leaving. I want them staying here. And I especially don't want them leaving because they've been given some misdirection and they feel frustrated and they, and they feel like they don't have anywhere to turn and, they're, and therefore they're leaving. Um, so today what I want to do is talk a little bit about, about course choices and some strategies we can use that will keep doors open. That is keep options open so that if you think, yes, a career in healthcare is for me, but you're not really sure which one, then um, you still can move, move forward, you can progress through your academic program, but still have the option um, to choose specific, a specific track after a year or so of study. So if we look at the health profession programs and we look at the prerequisites that, that they have, we are, what we want to look for then are commonalities. We want to look for common requirements um, in as many pre-health professions programs as we can find. And one of the things that we see is that virtually every uh, health profession program requires that you have some chemistry. And that's very interesting. Now, chemistry actually is usually offered, introductory chemistry is usually offered in two forms. One of the forms is kind of modified. It's uh, maybe more content, maybe explored at a less, um, a less, in less depth. And that is the chemistry that a lot of nursing students and some of the other four-year programs that give you uh, a degree which allows you to move directly into profession, that's the chemistry that a lot of those courses require. Now, if you look at medicine or optometry or dentistry or pharmacy um, or, physical or physical therapy, those courses require um, a different introductory chemistry. So, and a lot of times we just shorten that to Gen Chem 1. So general chemistry, the first semester of general chemistry. But I want you to be aware of that. So as you're looking at classes, I want you to look at prerequisites, and I want you to look at prerequisites not only in the career that you think you're interested in, but I want you to look at, at prerequisites in other careers. Because if we can pick a chemistry course, 
the kind of works as the prerequisite for a variety of careers, then, as I said, we've kept that do those doors open. We still have those as possible choices uh, for career options. So general chemistry is a very good place to start. Now, the other thing that's very frustrating that delays students here, starting at the University of New Mexico, is that there is a prerequisite for us for general chemistry, and that's college algebra. So if you haven't completed college algebra, if you don't have the equivalent of that, if you haven't scored well enough to test out of college algebra, and we would, you would do that on uh, your ACT or SAT, then you have to complete college algebra before you can move into general chemistry. Unfortunately, that, again, now that delays the process. So instead of being able to start with general chemistry in fall semester, you now instead have to start with, with um with college algebra fall semester and you can't begin your your chemistry series until spring semester. For people interested in medical school this now becomes a little bit challenging. One of the things now talking to the pre-med students um, out there, one of the things that but most of you are aware of now, for those of you that are in the process, you're definitely aware of this. For those of you that are just starting your college career or will be starting your college career in the near future, one of the things that you may not be aware of yet is that chemistry, when we look at the chemistry required for medical school, there are five semesters of chemistry that are required, and those need to be taken sequentially. So you take Gen Chem 1, that's the prerequisite for Gen Chem 2. Gen Chem 2 is the prerequisite for the first semester of organic chemistry. The first semester of organic chemistry is the prerequisite for the second semester of organic chemistry. And then, of course, after that, we have to get in at least one semester of biochemistry. And that's pretty much a universal um, uh, requirement for all medical schools. So our prerequisite requirements here at the University of New Mexico, if you complete those, you're kind of good across the board. Um, but if we look at the chem series, then as I said, there are different chemistries that are required for nursing and some of the other health professions programs um, compared to the Gen Chem 1 um, that's required for uh, pre-med students and, and students interested in, in dentistry and optometry and, and pharmacy. I know it seems a little daunting, but what I'd like to suggest is that everyone take the, 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 the Gen Chem that's required for medical school. Because when we look at the Gen Chem, when we look at that introductory chemistry course that's accepted for nursing and, and other programs, what you will usually see on prerequisite sheets is that they tell you to take this chemistry or in the place of that, they will accept, accept Gen Chem 1. And you'll see that on a variety of different prerequisite sheets for the health professions programs. We have the same kind of phenomenon in the first semester of biology. There are, there are two different introductory biology courses. I wish it didn't exist, but that's simply what we have to live with. There's an introductory biology course, and the, the, at the University of New Mexico, it's given a very misleading name. It's called Biology for the Health Sciences, which is misleading in the sense that it is for some of the health sciences, but not if you're interested in medicine or pharmacy or optometry or dentistry or veterinary medicine. It's not good for any of those. And so it's, it's a distraction. And if, if students haven't had a chance to talk to someone that's a little bit more informed of that and they're, and they're kind of relying on their own intuition to fill out their schedules, then there's a real hazard or real, a I have a concern that they're going to choose that, that introductory biology course, which is ultimately not the biology, introductory biology course they need to be taking if they're interested in medicine. So those are the kinds of challenges that I think that, 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 new students, students in the process, need to be aware of. All right, so if we're going to keep options open, and if we want to start our college career and get off to an efficient start, there's, I think, a few strategies we can think of. If you're in high school, one of the things that I would say is really work on your math. And if you have the opportunity to do dual credit, that is to do college credit while you're in high school, take advantage of that. Now, I know a lot of high schoolers do that, and on records, on transcripts, what I see is that a lot of high school students take sociology or psychology. They take some of the social sciences, but they tend to veer away from math and science. If you're seriously interested in the healthcare, I would strongly recommend that you sort of not avoid those challenging courses. And while you're in high school, if you can get college algebra out of the way, that's an excellent thing to do because then you're going to start your college career with it, the prerequisite for general chemistry done. So when you step onto campus, you can move directly into general chemistry. 
Now, for some of you that have had excellent chemistry in high school, you also have the option, you can begin your college chemistry series also while you're in high school. You can also take that as dual credit. So if you want to start your, if you want to start your science series, please do that. I also hear concerns from a lot of students that they think that if they take their, um, their sciences, their prerequisite sciences at, at two-year institutions or local community colleges, that sometimes, that somehow when they, when they come to apply for professional school, that that, that work, because it's been done in a two-year institution rather than a four-year institution, is going to be looked at differently. And what I want to reassure all of you is that simply isn't the case. Um, more and more students now are coming into health professions um, from less traditional routes, and a lot of those students end up taking prerequisite courses at community college because they're close by, they're near their homes, they're near their work, um, and that's the way that they can get their prerequisites done. So don't be concerned about that. So early on, get college algebra done, and if you want to start your, if you want to start your series, all of the health professions require some chemistry. So start with Gen Chem 1. Again, if you're looking at different professions, always take, if they list two chemistries, what I advise all of you is look to see which chemistry is the prerequisite for medical school and take that chemistry because that chemistry will be accepted by all of the health professions programs. You'll, that you'll still have your chemistry finished, but as I said, you've kept doors open. Same thing goes for biology. Introductory biology, very often two different introductory biologies offered, one for students interested in nursing school or dental hygiene, the other one for students that are interested in medical school, pharmacy, dental school. But I would also, again, draw to your attention that if you look on prerequisite sheets, nursing school, for example, will say, take this biology, but they will also accept the introductory biology that is the pre-med the, the pre student uh, biology, they'll accept that in its place. If you opt for the higher biology, if you opt for, um, uh, for that course that's required of uh, students interested in pharmacy, dentistry, optometry, medicine, then again, you're not closing doors. Now, on the other hand, if you're absolutely positive that you want to be a nurse or that you want one of the other health professions that requires that only requires that lower level of introductory biology and you're certain about that, then yeah, please go ahead and take that. But as I said, if at all, if you if you're at all on the fence and you're not sure and you're thinking maybe later on that it's even it's in the back of your head that you might be interested in in a different career go high go for the go for the the the, the pre, i'm going to call it the pre med biology go for the pre med introductory biology and that way you have not closed any doors and you're also putting yourself in a position where down the pike you won't have to repeat coursework now I mentioned before that the idea of chemistry, and I and I listed the five semesters of chemistry that pre med students have to have to finish, and 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 students interested in dentistry are looking at the same uh, five semesters. Student interested in, in uh, veterinary medicine are looking at the fa same five semesters. The challenge with five semesters is you need to understand that all of the admissions tests, the MCAT, the DAT, the PCAT, all of those tests that we're going to be taking for admission into our health professions programs. Those tests all assess your understanding of the prerequisite science courses. So that means that if you're going to really be prepared, yes, there's additional study that's required, but your basic, your foundational knowledge, that's all your prerequisite courses. And if you've got in your head that you're on the four-year plan, that you want to finish college and then go directly into a health professions program, the time that you have to take your, um, your entrance exam, your MCAT, DAT, PCAT, whatever, the time that you have to take that if you've got that four-year plan in your head is the summer between your junior and senior year. So because of that, you have to have all of your prerequisite courses completed by the end of your junior year so that su the summer between your junior year and senior year becomes your, I, I, when I'm talking to pre-med students, I call it your MCAT summer. That's the summer that we're really dedicating to a preparation uh, for the MCAT, and we'll take the MCAT sometime during the course of that summer. I hope that makes sense. It's a little bit confusing. And then just to round out the, the, the other um, um, prerequisites, a number of the health professions programs do require that you have physics, so be aware of those. Um, and the prerequisite here for physics 
is Calc 1. So you have to take at least one semester of calculus to have the prerequisite to get into physics class. So physics, be aware of that. Many health professions programs require anatomy and physiology. Interestingly, our medical school does not. Many medical schools do not. They require a year of biology instead. But be aware of that. Know if your health professions program requires anatomy and physiology. And if you do, if they do, you need to build that into your schedule. I guess the bottom line that I would say is do your homework. Um, look at a bunch of different health professions. If you're, if you're, if you're sure that healthcare is, is your passion and you're not exactly sure which niche is yours yet, look at all of them. Look at the prerequisite courses that are required for those programs. And when you're starting out, to give yourself time to make a more informed decision, start out taking some of the courses that, are gonna, that work for as many of those prerequisites as possible. So in other words, Find a course that's going to be a prerequisite course for all of those different uh, healthcare programs that you're interested in. Start with those. It gives you more time to explore. Thanks for joining me. I will see you next time. It's Jim McKinnell, Office of uh, Pre-Health Profession Student Development, University of New Mexico, and this is Planning for a Career in Healthcare. See you next time.